So I want to make the world a better place. Don't you? It often starts with an idea or a dream. Now, growing up in the U.S., I was always hearing about the American dream. We've heard the story all before, the rags riches story of two American kids starting a business in a garage and turning into a global tech giant, or the tale of a college student writing some code and turning into a software program that turns into a social media empire. They make movies about these people. And at the end of the movie, you learn they've all become billionaires and they decide to give a portion of their wealth to charity. This American dream is inherently a selfish one. It's, it's not my dream. It's not any dream that I want to be part of. I have a different dream. And my dream always starts off the same. It starts with equality. So I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My dad worked uh, night shift in a factory. My mom worked the local supermarket. My brother, my sister, my two heroes, the five of us uh, lived, in a, lived across the street from the farm. We were uh, in, a, in a housing project that was government subsidized. We were a, a working class family. So I was lucky enough to get into university, um, but in order to pay for that privilege, I had to work full time. It's so my first full time job, working at the Gap, folding clothes. So I can safely say that I was not living the dream. My second full-time job was working at a, a big New York law firm. Now, what I noticed for the first time really in my life was that people are not being treated equally. It's what we were even allowed to order off the dinner menu when we worked overtime. It just wasn't equal. And even at, at 19, I didn't know very much, and maybe I still don't know very much. But I knew right then and there it was not the type of company that I wanted to be part of. So if any of you have started businesses, and if you haven't, uh, let me tell you, it's very, very difficult. You sacrifice your time, you delay getting paid, you essentially put your life on hold. Well, one thing I would suggest you do not put on hold is equality. And for us, in our business, it, it had to be, equality had to be from the very beginning. So we run a, a profit with purpose food business. We make plant-based food. You can find us in our restaurants, you can find us in cafes, you can find us online. And we're taking a different approach to building an online business. We partner with businesses, we use physical locations and technology to convert our bricks and mortar customers into online buyers. Now, our business, just like any business, has got three legs to its stool. You've got customers, you've got suppliers, and you've got team members. Now, if any of these three legs are a little bit wobbly, your stool is going to fall over. Maybe not right away. You can overcharge a customer, underpay a team member doing exactly the same job as somebody else, but eventually your stool is going to fall over and your business is going to fail. So before you go off running off to design your three-legged stool, uh, or three-legged throne, as I might say, there are three things I would suggest you might want to do. So the first is choose your values. Ask yourself these tough questions. And don't be surprised that people that don't share your values decide to leave. If they don't, ask them to leave. We all have personal gardens, and it's important for us to pull weeds right away, whether that's in life or that's in business. It all kind of works, works together. So we have a, a perishable product. When we were first starting off, any of our suppliers you know, could have killed our business right away if they didn't provide us the ingredients on time at the, at the price that we agreed. So we expect our suppliers to be fair. Our suppliers are fair with us, we're fair with them, and that's why fair is one of our values. So the next thing, uh, the second thing you might want to do is choose how you want to behave. Now, values are, without question, the foundation of your business. They're the building blocks of your company. And they essentially signpost your team as to how they should make decisions. But ultimately, businesses 
are defined by how those people act. Now for us, equality starts with being transparent. Now we're radically transparent. We tell our customers how we're gonna price our product. We tell our suppliers when we're gonna pay them. And then we pay them on time. And even with our team, we tell them what the person sitting next to them is getting paid. These are very easy things for us to do. And ultimately, real change in behavior comes about with the small things that large groups of people do daily. Now here's two things I've committed to. So the first is I order directly from small suppliers. I do this with dog food. My dog Bruno loves this. The second thing I do is I order directly from, from restaurants, and then I physically go and pick up the orders. I'm eliminating the middlemen, and I'm supporting an industry that I, that I work in. And my personal view is it makes me feel better. I have a, I have a connection, and I, I think even with all the advances in artificial intelligence, having a human connection will never be a commodity. So the third thing you might want to do is choose what you stand for. Take a stand. Now, in 2006, I was diagnosed with cancer. Same thing that killed Bob Marley should have killed me. Now, over 10% of the U.S. population doesn't have health care. So if I didn't have health care, I literally wouldn't be standing here right now. I would literally be dead. That isn't equality. So I knew when I wanted to start my business, it had to be about real equality. So the diet I went on in 2006 is what our menu is based on. It's legitimately healthy. Our food's priced so everyone can, everyone can afford it. It's the same price as any burger joint or fried chicken shop. Healthy food shouldn't just be for the rich. There's a few other things that our, our business stands for as well. 50% of our board of directors are women. 60% of our team are women. The highest paid person, which isn't me by the way, is paid only two and a half times the lowest paid person. And our entire team own equity in the business. Bottom line is, everyone is treated equally. Now here's the thing. You're often told that you know, treating people equally is gonna have a, a negative impact on the value of your business. I assure you it's not. In fact, quite the opposite. So I'm acutely aware of the level of inequality that currently exists in the world right now. Less than 1% of the population own over 50% of the wealth. That's right, less than 1% own more than half of the wealth. Just think about that for a minute. And do you know what the most popular topic was at the World Economic Forum last year? Inequality. Yet, not a single business leader has stepped up to do anything about it. There's been no Rosa Parks moment, and it always starts with that one person. And maybe that could be you. So yesterday was our third year anniversary when we founded the business right here in Covent Garden. And starting next month, I'm gonna start giving away the company to our customers, to our suppliers, and to even people like you. Hashtag, I have enough already. So one of the hardest things in life is taking responsibility for our own actions. It's always somebody else's fault. And in this age of super convenience and one-click delivery, how do we make these businesses, or any business for that matter, accountable for our values, our behaviors, and ultimately what we stand for. And do we have to admit that whenever, and whenever we order online, that we're actually increasing the amount of inequality in the world rather than decreasing it? I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm incredibly optimistic and generally optimistic about the future. And this American dream that so many of us want, in case, some cases so badly, like Frodo's ring in The Lord of the Rings, we can still have, but we can make it so much better. And I want to make the world a better place. Don't you? It all ultimately comes down to the daily choices that we make, the values we choose, 
how we choose to behave and what we choose to stand for. And most importantly, deciding from the very beginning to start with equality.